the lead pastor, the senior pastor of the Greater True Line church. church, located in the heart of DeSoto, one of the best kept secret in DeSoto, Texas. I want to invite you every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. to our Sunday morning worship experience located at 538 Reunion Road in DeSoto. You can also join us every Sunday on our Facebook Live channel. The Greater True Vine DeSoto Facebook page. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel so every time we put up a new video, you'll be the first one to get it. And I can't wait to see you. And remember this, why settle for good when greater is available? God bless you. I can't wait to meet you. Be Hey, welcome in, everybody. This is your boy, Pastor Cobra. So glad that you tuned in for another night of Wednesday night in the Word. This is the day that the Lord has made, and guess what? I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for all of you uh, that have tuned in tonight. Do me a favor. Like and share this broadcast. Come on. Give me some likes. Give me some hearts. If I'm saying something to you, if I'm saying something relevant to you, go ahead and give me some likes and some shares get on the phone call somebody text somebody and let them know hey it's Wednesday night in the word and Pastor Cobra about to get in this word so let's make this thing happen are y'all ready for a word come on grab your Bibles right quick get your device or whatever that you use to read the word of God and let's jump in this thing together we are in a teaching on prayer and and now we're working through part two and I want you to catch this the whole idea of what prayer is now what is prayer we discussed uh what prayer is last week and here it is again let's put it on the screen everybody catch this prayer is a relationship wherein we humbly communicate worship and sincerely seek god's face knowing that he hears us loves us and will respond prayer can encompass look at it read it together confession praise adoration, supplication, intercession, and more. All that's prayer. All it can encompass, confession. Now, I don't want you praying all the time the same way, okay? David, when he let his loins lead his logic and busted a creep move with that girl who he knew was married, was so messed up in his spirit, all he could say in Psalm 51, against you and only you, God, have I sinned. And then he said what? creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. There, see, there might be times it's been such a trip that week, and let's go here, that you don't even start with adoration. you like, God, I ain't got time to play no games on how much I love you and all that, but tonight I feel like a mess, and I need you. Tonight I just want to plead the blood. I've been doing stuff that I shouldn't be doing, looking at stuff on my phone. I don't have time to go through that. I should adore you first, but I can't even get my adoration right until I confess. First John 1 John 1.9 says what? If we what? Confess our sins, right? And he's what? He's faithful and fair just to forgive us. You know, look at this definition again because what it does, what does it encompass? It encompasses praise. And I told you last week, sometimes just go to saying thank you, Jesus. <laughs> See, those are what I call drive-by prayers. Yeah, we're teaching our intercessors here at GTV and we talked about our intercessors that there are to be one time that you put your work in put your work in this this is the time i'm praying for my wife by name all of my children my mother my brothers my cousins the greater true vine church the mayor the president everything i can remember and by the way on our website we put something on there that says say my name yeah, where, where you can just type your name in for prayer. And somebody told me that they're going to type their name on it every week. And I told them, okay, you're the old school Baptist prayer list. Y'all remember when people used to be on the sick and shut-in list? Come on. And, and they be dead and everything. And we say, Mother Jones, she been dead for three years and she's still on the sick and shut-in list. But seriously, I understand Keep me on. Somebody just type in the comment and say, keep me on the list, Pastor. Keep me on the list. So there are times when or one time different watches, okay? First watch of prayer, and we'll touch this, is what, intercessors? Six to nine in the evening. Now, you may think the first watch will be in the morning, but technically, 
The first watch is the day before. Yeah, 69 is where you set the next day. That's my particular watch. And then you got the second watch, 9 to midnight. Then you got the third watch, that's 12 to 3. That's when a lot of creep moves be, be happening, high demonic activity when most brothers are getting shot in these streets, you know, 12 and 3 o'clock in the morning where clubs are closing and one night stand and brother danced all night and now he's at the bar trying to get somebody to go home with and a lot of fornication jumping off and a lot of things you hear, that's 12 to 3. Why? Because a lot of the intercessors are asleep. And the devil says, let's move. Come on. There's a reason why a lot of mess jump off because a lot of prayer warriors are asleep. The enemy is moving when a lot of intercessors are asleep or the Christian body. Somebody type in the comment and say, there's power in prayer. Say it. There's power in prayer. And this is not deep. This is Bible. All right? So look at it. Here's the definition again. And here's another form. Okay? So you have adoration. You have confession, supplication, or asking, and then intercession, and more. All of that is prayer. Now, we believe in intercession here at GTV, which means it is to be a go-between to pray for someone else. Now, truth be told, intercede is not necessarily a Christian word. Now, you can intercede between an argument between your mother and your sister. It is to intercede, to intervene, to go and be, to go between, you know, to be a go between. It, it's not necessarily we talking about Christian intercession. Now we touch that. Now, okay, real quick, gotta go fast tonight. God is personal and loving. Come on, type in the comments. Say God is personal. Now I need you to see that. And he's loving. He's loving. I'm not even going to touch John 15. I just want to run by it. But John 15, John 3, don't even turn. Just remember that. John 15, there's no greater love. John 3, for God so loved the world. You all know that. Come on, type in the comments again. Say God is personal and loving. Now, here's what I want you to understand. God loves you. Yeah. He loved you. When you was a trip, he loved you right now. I'm not just talking preacher talk right here. He loved you better than your mother loved you. He's not mean. He is love, the scripture says. I, I try to be loving, but he is the very embodiment of love. Even when the Bible says something that you miss. Now, how many of you try to tell the truth? Raise your hand. Come on, give me some likes. But just type in the comments and tell your neighbor, you got a lie in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let something jump off. There's one in you. But God is not a man <laughs> that he should lie, nor the son of man that should repent. I need you to catch this. He is true. He don't just tell the truth. He is the truth. Now, when I teach that, everybody misses that. I need something in my life that's not a lie. Because even when I think can be true, it's not true. But God is the truth and he's love. That's why I need to talk to him every day. Now, is that good, everybody? Okay, let's run along. God is omnipotent. Now, what am I trying to prove here? I'm trying to prove sort of this whole holy hypothesis or this theological thesis on why you need to talk to him. Why? God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful, omnipotent. He got all power. Now, I don't need to be asking somebody for something who don't have the ability to give it to me now. So I need a powerful God. He's all-powerful. Now, watch this. Luke chapter 1, 36 and 37, for what? Nothing should be impossible with God. See, when I got Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit, plus I'm in prayer, all things are, po are possible. I, I, I don't know who came to Bible study tonight with an impossibility, but there is no impossibility with God because God can heal any sickness. God can heal any disease, any marriage, any issues from your past. It is not impossible. Now, another major concept, and I'm running tonight, is that God is omnis omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. Now, here's where I want to slow down. Come on, type in the comment and say all-knowing. Now, I got a scripture that's going to blow you back. 
Yeah, you, you already know it, but most of us read it from the King James. But look at the NLT of this particular Davidic Psalm, because Psalm 139 says, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart. Peep this. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Look at it. You've heard me say it. It's beyond my capacity of comprehension. It's above me cognitively. He said, the fact that you know everything about me and you still deal with me, you know everything. I've said this, any critical thinking person, the question that begs asking, okay, so you keep pushing prayer on us, pastor. Um, you teaching it every Wednesday. It's not a time that you get up and you say something about prayer. You want me to engage to God what's on my heart. And the psalmist just tells us that he knows everything about me anyway. And he know what I'm going to say before I say it. And the reason I'm saying it. So then why pray, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Because God is saying, I just want to talk to you. <laughs> I just want a relationship with you. And not even for information's sake. You ain't, you ain't told me nothing that I already know about you. But I'm glad you told me anyway. You didn't give me any new revelation about you. I know your end from your beginning which gets my mind tripping on what the psalmist says. What is man that thou art mindful of him, that you would deduce your divinity to deal with someone acting demonically, that you would come down to where I am and listen to me and talk to me when you already know what I'm going to say. Now, this is a bad example because any juxtaposition between us and divinity is always erroneous. But let me just throw this at you. It's uh, the closest I can get because I'm not the greatest teacher, but everybody with a child can feel me on this, particularly teenager or, or preteen. All parents, come here. Come here. Ha have you ever already knew what was jumping off with your child, but you still was like, okay, talk to me, baby. Talk to me, okay? I I'm trying to do the best I can, okay? I'm trying to do the best I can. Here it is. Talk but you say, talk to me. You already kind of knew they were feeling some kind of way because you can pick it up because you birthed them. You, you know them, and, and yet you like, you want to talk about something. Just, just, just tell me. Just tell me. Just, not, not so much for information's sake, but you just want to hear from them and help them work through it even though you already know it. So when you talk to God, it is not an exercise in futility or you wasting your time. This gets me tripping on this. The fact that God knows already what I want and what I need but still says the way I set the system up up, that you got to ask me what I already know you want because the purpose of the creation narrative okay come here I'm losing some of y'all because this has become so amazing I, I'm not going to be able to finish this tonight I'm just going to stop but, but I want you to look at me and get this part if you don't get nothing else God wants to partner with you okay I said, God wants to partner with you. That's all prayer is, and it got me tripping. God wants to partner with you. There's a girl that got cancer or a girl that's about to lose her mind, and you know about it. God already know what's happening. God don't need you to pray to heal her. God don't need you to pray uh, fix her marriage. But God said, I have set the system up. That if you ask me, because now this is going to make you run out of your seat. So God, you let me have something to do what heaven do? <laughs> Intercessors know what I'm talking about. This should make you cry and shout. 
that we got a God that said, I don't have to ask you anything or wait on you, but I want you to understand that your prayers are that powerful, that your prayer can move God. Your prayers can have can move a situation. I'm convinced of this, y'all, that, 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 that there's some stuff in my life, watch this, that was going to happen with prayer or not, but there's some stuff could have been prevented had I had a little talk with Jesus I'm helping somebody there's some stuff that could have shifted if I had warred about it instead of just complaining about it or crying about it or talking about it or drinking about it or sexing about it if I hadn't got on my knees consistently I believe God would have partnered with me some stuff was going to happen anyway don't beat yourself up because time and chance happen to us all but but you be surprised in what you can prevent through prayer or what you could ex expedite, what you could make happen quicker with prayer pressure. Somebody ought to type in the comment, prayer works. Come on, say prayer works. I'm running out of time. I'm just going to jaywalk it. Uh, so let's talk about what prayer is not. Okay, what prayer is not. Number one, prayer is not magic. Mm. We cannot summon God as though he is some genie waiting to come out of a bottle based on our circumstances. No, prayer is not magic. Prayer is real. Matter of fact, I'm going to drop this on you. My prayers don't always get me everything I want. See, if I don't teach this right, somebody's going to block me out like he's teaching some stuff I can't feel. See, please catch this. It's not magic. Prayer don't fix everything I won't fix. If it did, I wouldn't have no problems. <laughs> and if prayer was magic and God did everything I want, I start to pray in some crazy stuff. Like, Lord, kill them all. <laughs> How many of you wanted to pray like David? You know, that's what David be praying. You know, I, I do get jealous of the psalm because psalm is the only place where you can ask God to kill your enemies. <laughs> like, Lord, just wipe them off the face of the earth. I'm like, oh, Lord, I, I live in the New Testament. <laughs> I got to love my enemies. But in the psalms, in the psalms, you can just say kill them and God will just kill them all. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Okay, but watch this. Here's another one. Here's another one. Prayer does not make demands. Mm, I'm not demanding anything. We can make requests, but we don't make demands. God is still the creator of the universe and does not take orders from us. No, 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 no. Prayer is for our benefit, not God. See, we need a relationship with God. Old folks say you need God. God don't need you. Yeah, I need him way more than he needs me. Now, I want you to catch this, and I'm going to move, but listen to me. God don't always fix every situation you want him to. See, if I taught you that, uh, forgive me, if I taught you that, please forgive me. God don't fix every situation, and you heard me say this, but he does fix you. Uh, God don't fix every situation. Prayer don't always fix every situation, but he does fix you. Here's what prayer is doing. Lord, help me to say this the way I see it, and I want you to catch this. You see saying, Lord, fix my husband. God says, really? He going to have to choose to want me. Yeah, he, he got some choice in this. So, I know what the scripture says where it says the believing spouse sanctifies the unbelieving spouse, but still he grown. And he going to have to choose me and some stuff he going to have to want to do with me. And plus, you picked him and you slept with him and I didn't tell you to marry him and now y'all married and I love both of y'all. I love him. I love you. But you can't do you and then ask me to fix everything on your timeline. So that's not how we gonna roll, God said. Because if I do that, then you can't teach your daughter not to do what you did. So, so let me make you pay for it some. So when you tell your daughter you're not just talking theoretically 
tyrannically, but experimentally, you can say, baby, if you go my route, God will bless you, but you will pay for, pay for it a while. He'll still bless you, but you're going to have to pay for it. So God don't always fix everything we want him to fix on our timeline, but here is what I can guarantee. Prayer is going to fix you. <laughs> I need y'all to catch this tonight because y'all are missing this. If you think this is a game, then you can go ahead and log off and, and go to another Bible study teaching. But if you believe me to be a man of God, then get a hold of this. And that is that while you are praying daily, even though there's not a man in your life yet and you're not rich yet and he hasn't fixed everything with your brother yet and you got the one son that hasn't come home yet so you like what is prayer for because I'm giving up time and pastor told me I'm praying with routine rhythm and relevance consistently and it seemed like nothing is happening you missed it he is doing something but he's doing it in you even though they not changing there is impact on your emotion is being limited that's why now you don't cuss fast as you used to and you like you know what my husband's getting better I hate to tell you this he ain't a bit better Jimmy is the same fool he was last month but you're getting better so now when Jimmy say certain stuff you just say you know what praise the Lord cause little by little go on and just type in the comment and say God is working on me go ahead he's working on me prayer is doing something in you Prayer is connecting you. I'm done. Just let me just give you this. I'm done. But uh, look at 1 John uh, 5, 14, and this is the confidence. Woo, read it out loud. Come on, say it. I know we're virtual, but just go ahead and say it. I can't hear you, but God hears you. This is the confidence which we have before him that if we ask what? What? Anything according to what? His will. He what? Hears us. Now watch this. The Bible does not say if we ask anything according to his will. He gives it to us. Oh, my goodness. It means he hears us. See, some foolish stuff you ask for, God said, I ain't even trying to hear that. See, when you, see, when, when you God, you can make yourself not hear when you're God. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to unhear or unsee something but you couldn't? But when you God, try not to shout. You can just decide not to hear. So even before you ask, I'm convinced some stuff he don't say no to. He don't even hear it because he chooses not to hear it. Yeah, some guy was so dumb, you said, Lord, if it's your will. God said he don't even look like what I want you to have. He ain't even in the ballpark, baby, in what I'm thinking about for you. You all in your flesh. So guess what? Let me show you the scripture again. If I get this part done, I had a good night. Here it is. If we ask anything according to his will come here this is all i'm gonna do i won't get to the rest he said if we ask anything according to his will he hears us but now how am i gonna know his will without prayer mm. which means i'm gonna have to pray so that i can pray in his will Ooh, i'm gonna try that again god done set the system up so cold that I can't even pray right until I pray right. <laughs> I'm going to try it one more time for the person in the back. Come here. God says, you thought all those mornings at 630 when everybody else was tweeting and checking who texted them last night and you don't cut your phone on like your pastor until your prayer hour is through. Don't care who texts you. Don't care who posted and tagged you. Pastor, somebody may have died last night. They'll be dead when I get through praying. Yeah, I don't play that. All you mothers kill me talking about, oh, baby, I got to call my phone because one of the kids, baby, your son is 37 years old. We on a date. <laughs> God got them in Jesus' name. Amen. You worry about oh, my, my, my baby may call me. Your baby is 40 years old. <laughs> Listen, there are times 
when I got to trust God. I, I can't let my life be lived by the moment like I'm running something. If God can't control things for an hour while I pray, then what kind of God do I have? Cut that phone off. Some of your phones ain't ever been off since you had them. They, 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 they even charged on. Woo! Type in the comment and just tell somebody, cut it off, cut it off. Come on, I got to pray. I got to pray because while I'm praying, here it is, everybody. You're starting to get his heart. When you pray, you start to get his heart. All the mornings, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, bless me day after day. Some of you are 35 and, 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 and you know you've prayed more in the last few months than you ever prayed. Some of you are in your 50s, 60s, uh, 20. Watch this. All your life. Can, can you keep it real with me? You've really been doing your will, even in church. Yeah, you've been doing your will, not God's will, because you weren't praying daily. You didn't really have a connection. So you see, guys, yeah, he, he kind of cute. He talks to me nice. He seemed okay, and boom, it always ended up wrong because you didn't pray. Or the job. It, it, it seemed like it's a good place to work, and boom, you end up quitting. Every friendship you trusted too fast, they hurt you because you never listened and really connected. But what's happening, and you don't know it, even though you don't have a man yet and all the money you want yet, this daily flow is happening. Now you don't see it, and the devil's telling you it's not happening. But for the first time in your life, you've been getting in the flow of God. You've been in prayer. You've been in tune with God. Imagine this, and I need you to catch this. For years, you haven't been in that flow. So what decisions did you make? Mm. Whatever the flesh said do. Because whoever you feed is the strongest. So now, you're in God's flow, and all of a sudden, some stuff comes to your mind, and your spirit says, that's not God's will for me. So I'm not going to even ask for it so I don't have to keep getting no's. But as I stay connected to the vine, whoo, every morning when the devil tell you, girl, here you go again, 30 minutes, nothing happening in your life. I don't know why you're praying. It's, it's not just stuff I'm getting. He's connecting with me. See, something told me to turn left at the light instead of right. And something to the right was a major accident. But God in his divine wisdom made me go left. I didn't know he was making me avoid that. Ooh, but because I'm so connected to God, he's starting to flow with me. I, ooh, I wish I had somebody here that will receive this. I wish I had somebody that's watching me that will receive. If you're receiving this, give me some lights. Give me some hearts. So as I pray, I am now praying the will of God. So that if I'm attracted to something, my flesh tells me one thing, but my spirit says no. And that didn't happen to me, Pastor, before I started praying. See, if we pray anything according to his will, he hears us. That's all. Did y'all receive that tonight? Come on, give me some hearts. Did y'all receive that? All right, I, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Certainly not out of message. Listen, again, quickly, if you need prayer, come on, you know it. There's the number on the screen. Our first-time listeners, first-time viewers, you can call that number. Somebody will get back with you in 24 hours. We believe in prayer here. Listen, why don't you sow a seed tonight? Come on, I need every person that's watching to sow a $10 seed offering right now. Come on, don't hesitate. There are many ways to give. Come on, we need your help to continue to up build, uplift God's kingdom and build the kingdom Come on, we need every person, every viewer, every GTV nation, every GTV member. So a $10 seed tonight, okay? All right. God bless you. God keep you. Listen, I'm excited. 911. Somebody say 911. On September uh, the 9th, uh, on September 11th, okay, 9-11 is our annual family and friends day with none other than my cousin, Pastor Bertrand Bailey. Come on. 
I'm so excited. He is somebody preacher, somebody singer. Listen, I want to invite all of my family and friends. You are welcome to come and worship with us in person. Yes, in person. We have in-person worship. We're following all CDC guidelines, so please mask up. But uh, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. Why don't you come and help us celebrate this big event, one of the biggest events that we have had in this ministry. We always enjoy Family and Friends Day, and we want all our family and friends to join, okay? Well, all right. Don't forget, tune in. Also, not only tune in, but come. Be in the presence with the saints because we'll be here at 10 a.m. Sunday morning as we worship our God. There is a word from the Lord for you, okay? And remember this, why settle for good when what? Greater is available. God bless you and I love you in Jesus' name. Be blessed.